Okay, good morning and welcome to today's uh, session from the Book of Acts. Uh, let's pray and let's begin. Uh, Abhishek, uh, would you like to lead us in a word of prayer today? Sure, Pastor. Yeah. So, Holy Father, we come before Holy Prince right in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for giving us this opportunity to study on the Book of Acts, Lord. Lord, give us a listening ear, Lord Jesus, that we may understand. And bless pastor, give her wisdom, knowledge, understanding through her. Teach us, Lord Jesus. Lord, teach us that we may understand what whatever we uh, talk today, Lord Jesus. Thank you for this day, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Abhishek. Um, so let's begin with a quick review. Uh, of what we had been studying about in the last class. So we primarily talked about the second missionary journey of uh, Apostle Paul. So I will try to put up the map for us. That way it will be easier to review. Okay, there's just some uh, issue with you know, the uh, scrolling of my computer. That is always the problem. Let me see how best. Okay. okay, sorry about that. It's just not uh, picking up. So let me see. Maybe during the second session, uh, you know, I will uh, try and present the screen uh, to all of us. Uh, but we saw how the journey restarted. Um, from Antioch of Syria, he said that uh, Paul, this time around with Silas, went through the old uh, route, touching the cities that he had initially ministered at during the first missionary journey. Uh, and from there, you know, he had a desire to move into new territory, primarily um, Bithynia and uh, the Asian region. But at that point, um, the Holy Spirit felt that it wasn't the appropriate time. Okay, now we uh, know that you know maybe uh, at, at that point uh, there was already opposition in some of the cities where he had ministered. So we don't know. Uh, maybe there would have been people whose hearts were not prepared to receive the word of God, and which is why God would have uh, guided Paul to another place. He had a dream uh, about a Macedonian man calling him to come and minister. And uh, in this way, he was led to the Macedonian region. Okay, So from there, we saw how there were certain cities that uh, he visited. The most important city, a port town, which we discussed about was Philippi, where we saw that the gospel made an impact in every section of the society. Uh, there were also women 
who, if you look at Lydia, she went to the riverside and she was a religious person. So you could say the so-called religious people and the non-religious people you had like uh, the slave girl and also the jailer and his family, they also committed their lives to the Lord. So in Philippi, that's what we saw happen. And later on, you know, we see that uh, he goes to uh, uh, this place called Thessalonica. In my narration last time, I think I made a, a small mistake. I said Beria first and then Thessalonica, but it was Thessalonica first and then um, Beria. So in Thessalonica, we saw uh, now we are at Act 70, you know, when uh, uh, what happened in Thessalonica is described. So we see good ministry that took place uh, uh, in verse 4 of Act 17. We understand that uh, the people were persuaded. So Paul, uh, in his preaching, he also engaged with the people with uh, you know what we call as reasoning so he reasoned with them to actually convince them uh, about the lord jesus and how he is the messiah so this term reasoning you know we talked about that a little bit uh, in the last class and uh, you know we said that uh, it is preaching but it's a, a convincing sort of a preaching where one is uh, discussing about the subject very thoroughly okay and examining the subject with the listeners uh, in a detailed manner so that you know the listeners are convinced so in this way there was great success in the ministry in Thessalonica um, and also we read about some leading women so great multitude believed and leading women of Thessalonica also uh, uh, believed in the Lord Jesus. And then there is this instance of uh, people in Thessalonica meeting in Jason's house. Okay, uh, But there is trouble for Paul and Silas uh, uh, because, you know, you, you find that uh, probably just like the Philippian region, the magistrates in Thessalonica would also have felt uh, you know threatened uh, with this new teaching and uh, thereby they there was this uproar a uh, mob uproar and uh, jason was the person who bore the brunt of uh, this opposition so he was dragged out of his house and uh, uh, he was uh, he was uh, you know uh, forced to pay a security so it was something something that they did to uh, to uh, you know state that uh, somebody was uh, doing a wrong thing so you know jason was uh, alleged to be this this uh, person uh, uh, hosting people who were uh, again uh, allegedly uh, not good for the community or the society so uh, jason had to pay a security it's uh, at that moment when uh, you know he was actually let out but we know that uh, paul and silas traveled out from thessalonica because it was not safe anymore so we were at verse 10 in acts chapter 17 uh, and uh, a couple of things that we we do understand from other passages of scripture is uh, that you know Paul uh, rushed out of Thessalonica, so uh, he also had many other things to actually uh, tell the Thessalonians, build them up in the word of the Lord. So, which is why he later writes the very first epistle, uh, and that is to the Thessalonians. So we have, you know, Thessalonians 1, Thessalonians 2. Uh, why, why did Paul write it? Because he had to rush out of Thessalonica, uh, but he had so much more to say. And uh, he probably wrote this from uh, Corinth. You know, we were to read about that city later as well. So then, uh, you know, Beria, uh, I, I know we kind of touched on it, uh, but, you know, a little more in detail, I, I wanted to uh, go over Beria. So uh, let's start at uh, verse 10 of Act 70. Uh, I want to request uh, one of us to please read from verse 10 to verse 15, Act 17. OK. 
Okay, who would like to read? Pastor, is it the sorry? Is it the Acts seventeen? What's the verse? Yeah. So, uh, uh, Acts seventeen verses ten through fifteen, and I see Christopher also, uh, you know, muted. So, Christopher, maybe you can read the next section, uh, from six verse sixteen to it's a long question. And oh, okay. I was just asking yes. for the reference. Oh, okay. But uh, you can read it, Kung. You read one portion and Christopher can read the next. 10 to 15, you can read. Acts 17, 10 through 15. Okay. Um, that very night, the believers sent Paul and Silas to Berea. When they arrived there, they went to as a Jewish synagogue. The people, the people of Berea were more open-minded than those in Thessalonica, and they lis listened eagerly to Paul's message. They searched the scripture day after day to see if Paul and Silas were teaching the truth. As a result, many Jews believed, uh, as did many of the prominent Greek women and men. But when some Jews in Thessalonica heard that Paul was Preaching the word of God in Berea, they went there and stirred up trouble. The believers acted at once, sending Paul onto the coast while Silas and Timothy remained behind. Those escorting Paul with him, sorry, those escorting uh, Paul went with him all the way to Athens. The, uh, then they returned to Berea with instructions for Silas and Timothy to hurry and join him. Yes, thank you, Kung. So uh, in Beria, we uh, see uh, that there is a description of the believers, uh, the fact that they were more fair-minded and that they searched the scripture. So fair-minded uh, has to do with a, a ready heart. So they were very open to the gospel to what was shared to them so uh, that was helpful you know, for uh, paul and uh, silas to do their ministry so it's basically readiness of mind fair-minded is readiness okay so they received it very quickly then the other important thing about these people is that they search the scriptures daily they search the scriptures daily uh, to understand whether these things were so so the uh you know, it, it's amazing. It's amazing how they had this kind of a mindset because what mattered was the standard of God's word, the truth of God's word. They were not uh, uh, overcome by the, uh, you know, the personality of Paul. We know that he probably had a very, uh, you know, a, a, a very attractive personality because he was a passionate individual. Now, we will also see that Paul writes the many epistles to the churches and, uh, you know, that, that he is, uh, even in the team, Paul and uh, Silas, you know, he would have been uh, uh, the more eloquent one, the more learned one. Uh, you know, given all these facts, here are people who still search the, the word of God to ensure that what they are hearing is the truth. So there's a very big lesson for us from the Barians. You know, uh, we, it's not so much about the preacher anymore. It's about the truth which we are hearing. So uh, we have to be very careful about what we absorb and you know, what we receive, what we believe, because uh, it will eventually be what we apply in our lives. And uh, we cannot afford to apply anything which is uh, you know, contrary to the truth of God's word. So the variants were both ready to receive the word of God and they were also people who were cautious and careful to examine what they were listening, compare it with what the word actually says uh, and then 
you know, make that a part of their life. So even today, like, we have so many preachers, so many uh, teachings, so many, um, you know, uh, perspectives of, of the word that are presented to us. And uh, it's uh, important to examine everything which is uh, shared with us. Okay, so uh, that is something we learned from the variants. So there's a short, a very quick uh, account about the variants, and then Paul, uh, you, you know, Luke moves on to uh, uh, Athens. So again, another thing that we can we can see here from verse 14 is that immediately the brethren sent Paul away to go to the sea. So Paul is traveling alone. So in Athens, he is actually alone. But both Silas and Timothy remain there. Now, why isn't there a mention of Luke? Because at Troas, we had Luke joining in. Um, however, we see in Beria, Paul, uh, Silas and Timothy, okay, they stayed on. So uh, there is this whole pastoral apostolic kind of an approach, you know, in the uh, planting and equipping the churches so luke probably stayed on in thessalonica though he doesn't talk about it that is what we understand so luke remained in thessalonica he would have continued to encourage the believers and equip the believers and all that uh, uh, when it comes to beria paul left silas and timothy so that you know some of the foundations of uh, 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 what we believe would be taught to the believers, they would be strengthened. So, you know how uh, we are seeing this pattern, winning souls for the kingdom of God, um, making believers, right, by by speaking the, the uh, gospel to them, but also equipping them in the word of god in the you know work of the spirit so that they are established and they become disciples because in the great commission that's what jesus said go into all the world and make disciples teaching them everything you know, that uh, i have taught you and then baptizing them in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit so it's a proper work of making disciples so notice silas and timothy stay on but Paul goes to Athens. Now, we will study a little bit more about you know, the work which is done in Athens. So, uh, Christopher, would it be uh, fine for you to please read uh, from verse 16? You may read all the way till 34. Now, while Paul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was provoked within him when he saw that the city was given over to idols. Therefore, he reasoned in the synagogue with the Jews and with the Gentile worshippers, and in the marketplace daily with those who happened to be there. When certain Epicurean and Stoic philosophers encountered him, and some said, What does this babble want to, want to say? As I said, he seems to be a proclaimer of foreign gods because he preached to them Jesus and the resurrec resurrection. And they took him and brought him into the esophagus, saying, oh, so are you are you pages saying, maybe know what this new doctrine is of which you speak, for you are bringing some strange things to our ears. Therefore, we want to know what these things mean. For all the Athenians and the foreigners who were, who were there spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear some new thing. And Paul stood in the midst of Areopagus and said, Men of Athens, I perceive that all in all things you are very religious. For as I was passing through and considering the objects of your worship, I even found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God. Therefore, the one whom you worship, without knowing him, I proclaim to you. God who made the world and everything in it, since he is Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made with hands. Nor is he worship with men's hands, as though he needed anything, since he gives to all life, breath, and all things. 
and he has made them one blood, every nation of men who dwell on all the face of the earth, and has determined their pre-appointed times and the boundaries of their dwellings. So they should seek the Lord in the hope that they may grope for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. But in him we live and move and have our being, as also some of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. Therefore, since we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the divine nature is like gold or silver or stone, something shaped by art and men's devising. Truly these times of ignorance God overlooked, but now commands all men everywhere to repent, because he has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained. He has given assurance of this to all by raising him from the dead. And when they heard the resurrection of the dead, some mocked, while others said, We will hear you again on this matter. So Paul departed from among them. However, some men joined him and believed. Among them, Dionysius, the Areopagite, a woman named Damaris, and others with them. Yes, uh, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Christopher, for reading. And uh, I think I have uh, been able to display the map of the second missionary journey. Are you all able to see it? Yes. OK, great. OK. So uh, just to you know, help us uh, register what's going on, it's always good to look at you know, the map a couple of times. So uh, whatever I stated is here in these red lines showing the direction of the journey. Uh, and so far, you know, we've noticed that Paul has come into the Macedonian region. So, you know, the, the region over here is the, the Galatian uh, region, Galatia. And then, uh, uh, you know, now we have the Macedonian region where uh, uh, a lot of the action is. But uh, Paul travels out from there and uh, he comes to this place called Athens. Athens, it's uh, said to be about 12 days by road uh, from Beria, but it would have been, you know, for three days uh, by sea. But, uh, you know, somehow Paul takes the road, he, he travels, he comes to Athens, he's alone over here. Uh, and then we will see that he goes to the Achaean region, the Achaean region, where he will spend uh, a substantial amount of time, 18 months, roughly a year and a half, in uh, the city called as Corinth, which is uh, a fairly large uh, city. Um, and so one of there are many important cities uh, as far as the second missionary journey is concerned. But the point to notice that in the second missionary journey, there are some old cities, some new cities. And uh, there is this intense uh, 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 approach where Paul and his team are making disciples. When I say Paul and his team, we mean Silas, Timothy, Luke. Uh, and, uh, you know, when he takes time to build up people in Corinth, uh, we will read in the epistles, you know, many other names. Uh, so that by now, we already have, you know, read names of Lydia and Jason. So a lot of new people are actually being raised up, some of whom become leaders who will uh, work together with Paul. So in Corinth, we will also see another wonderful couple who will uh, connect with uh, Paul, who are Aquila and Priscilla. So Corinth is the place where he takes a lot of time in the second missionary journey, you know, building up uh, people believers later you know he we will see that he will go to this asian region uh, but it's just a touch and go okay so he's not really going to spend a lot of time there uh, so he'll go to ephesus and then he will kind of rush you know to uh, uh, 
Caesarea and then to Jerusalem because he has made a vow to God and then he wants to keep that vow. So that's about the end of the second missionary journey. So this, uh, this portion of his travel uh, is uh, more about keeping the vow than, you know, going into a, a new place to preach Christ. And then, of course, he will complete the journey by going back to Antioch of Syria. So and that's, again, uh, a, a reminder of what actually is going on uh, in the second missionary journey. And uh, I think uh, the last class, I uh, I, I pronounce uh, Cilicia as Sicilia. So sorry about that. It's Cilicia. OK, so uh, uh, that is where Paul is actually from, Tarsus of uh, Cilicia. So here's the map for us. And you can Google the map and uh, uh, have a look at it yourself. Uh, and just to reiterate, you know, most of what I am uh, sharing with you is, uh, uh, of course, from what we can understand from the scriptures in a, uh, you know, in a plain and a simple way. In addition to that, a couple of uh, main uh, commentaries uh, the main one is of course i, I said is enduringword.com that you can go to and uh, you can read from david guzik's uh, commentary there uh, of the book of acts so that gives us uh, some background uh, which which i am also reading up and i am sharing from uh, the other uh, resource would be uh, a good resource is uh, the the book of Acts, the Acts of the Apostles from uh, APC publication, Revivals, Visitations, and Moves of God. Okay. Just sharing this so that you're not disoriented. Uh, you can also read up uh, uh, all of this, and uh, that will help you understand you know, what we are discussing better. So right now, we are at Athens. Okay, So Paul is alone over here, and what exactly happens? So let's discuss a little bit. Uh, about you know, what is going on. Okay, coming now to Athens from verse 16. So notice it says, Paul waited for them at Athens. So he's actually waiting for these people to come. So he's there uh, for uh, a little bit of time. And his spirit was provoked within him when he saw that the city was given over to idols. So uh, Paul we don't know whether his intention was to quickly move through Athens and give his uh, time to Corinth. But when he was in Athens, his spirit was provoked. Uh, these are all ways in which the Holy Spirit speaks to us. We saw that uh, Paul had a vision, and that was the communication of God uh, and guiding him and leading him into Macedonia. Again, there is a guidance of the spirit. What is that? The sense of feeling provoked in the spirit. So that sense would have wanted Paul to do something. He's provoked in his spirit. Why is he provoked in his spirit? Because he sees so many idols in Athens. So uh, that shows us that the people of Athens were people of faith. They had idols because they were worshippers. Now, understanding a little bit about Athens as a city, we uh, recognize that Athens was uh, named after a Greek goddess known as uh, Athena. And it is one of the oldest cities uh, of Greece. And uh, it was a prominent city. It was continuously inhabited for about 5,000 years. And it also is a very, uh, you know, a, a, a city which is rich because it, it had uh, philosophers growing up in it. Some of the names are Socrates, Plato, you know, Demosthenes, Aristotle. These, all these people are from, uh, from Athens. And uh, this particular city, not just philosophy, but uh, when it came to art or uh, even science, right? It was a city that uh, that encouraged all of this. It uh, ha it housed Plato's Academy, okay, um, and uh, that again is a center of science, art, and philosophy. So you could look at it like a city which had a 
prominent university that people would want to come to and uh, learn from. So today we look at some university cities like Oxford and Cambridge. So comparable to cities like that so it's a very intellectual place another speciality of the places as uh, paul noticed there were many idols so there were uh, people who stated you know there's a, a a quote from uh, one of the philosophers of of the time he said that there were more idols in um, uh, in athens than there were men so you know those many idols were there because people were worshippers and uh, you know there was a lot of new philosophies that uh, everyone would come up with and uh, keep you know having new idols uh, to worship so we also notice that uh, there were two prominent philosophies and the men there is a mention isn't it in in our scriptures here one is epicurean and the other is uh, the stoic so what are these philosophies about epicurean these were people who believed that pleasure in life is everything okay so they they thought that pleasure is the end of man and that one should pursue uh, pleasure so it was uh, uh, started this philosophy was initiated or uh, you know uh, the person who came up with this philosophy is epicurus uh, and one of his students came up with another philosophy known as uh, stoicism in which uh, they believe that there are many gods uh, and uh, that you know life is uh, life ends and life starts all over again so you know certain kinds of uh, thoughts that people had and they they stuck to these philosophies there's a lot more to the core beliefs of uh, both of these philosophies but i'm just touching upon the key things what they believe so in uh, stoicism they just thought that you know life is just a series of or a cycle of events uh, that uh, sort of keeps repeating and uh, whatever happens the gods have a meaning uh, to why those things happen so uh, people as it is they were very uh, you know interested in, in um, philosophies in Athens. So it is a challenge for Paul because he's coming to uh, a very intellectual community. How is he going to uh, approach this community and how is he going to uh, actually share the gospel in this community? So we also notice here that you know, Paul engages in sharing the gospel so let's look now at uh, verse 17 where we read therefore he reasoned in the synagogue with the jews and with the gentile worshippers and in the marketplace daily with those who happen to be there so uh, in this intellectual place you know paul has an approach one is to meet the religious folks the other is to meet uh, the May, may they may or may not be religious but the marketplace people in the marketplace so one is he goes to the synagogue that's a good place to find religious people both the jewish and the gentile worshippers he talks to them about jesus the marketplace uh it's also known as agora okay in, in the greek culture the marketplace was known as agora so he would go to agora and uh he would speak to the uh unbelieving in in uh, god or you know who did not know about the jewish uh, god he would speak to them and minister to them so you know he was trying his best to reach out to every section of the community okay and that was his approach now coming to what happened next he encounters these epicurean and stoic philosophers uh, and uh, they actually call him a babbler why do they call him a babbler? Uh, firstly, because they didn't know who Paul was. He was definitely a very learned person, but you know he didn't show that off. Uh, and uh, the second reason is that these philosophers were very proud of their knowledge, and they thought that they knew better than anybody. So their first uh, way of assessing Paul is babbler. What what does he want to say? Okay, uh, and they recognize that he's proclaiming a foreign god 
which was interesting to them. So you see, it's a land of philosophies anyway. So come, let's add to it. Let's find out you know, what new philosophies this babbler has to bring. So recognizing this, they invite him to a place known as Areopagus. Areopagus, uh, you can imagine with me that you know, it was this arena. It was this arena uh, where, uh, um, you know, people would gather and uh, speakers would show up and they will share from their own uh, philosophies and just present it to the people. You know, today we have this whole concept of the TED talk and all where people will People come and share and others uh, listen. So it's something like that. Areopagus was that place in Athens where uh, one could come and share their independent thought. So uh, it's it's amazing that Paul got an opportunity to go there and introduce this foreign god. Areopagus is also known as Mars Hill. Okay, It's also known as Mars Hill. So he goes there and people ask him, you know, tell us what is this new doctrine uh, is that you speak of. And we heard that, you know, you're bringing some strange things uh, to our ears and we want to know what these things actually mean. So Athenians and foreigners. So it just goes to tell us that people from the surrounding regions visited uh, Athens because they also were interested in learning new philosophies. So they were just attracted to new things. And then begins Paul's talk to these uh, listeners from verse 22. So Paul stands up there. He talks to the men of Athens. And you see, uh, the way Paul presents his message, we have to notice this everywhere. You know. Paul and his team, they try their best not to give offense to anyone. They contextualize their message as much as possible. They try to be as uh, law abiding uh, as you know they could possibly be. So they are very respectful of every culture. So they come here to Athens and over there, you know, we see that uh, Paul goes from what they already know. So you know, he brings up this thing uh, that I saw an altar and the inscription said it is to the unknown God, okay, to the unknown God. So let me tell you, let me tell you more uh, about this God that you don't know about. So he is contextualizing it and starting from things that they are aware of uh, and uh, taking them to a place where he introduces uh, the Lord Jesus and, uh, you know, uh, the, the God that he is actually preaching. So then he begins to describe this God, the unknown God. And he says that he's a creator. You know, I'm at verse 24. Where it says God who made the world and everything in it, since He is the Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made with hands. So basically, He's describing Christ, you know, and the Trinitarian God, but He brings it in a way that they can understand. And then you will notice after He describes God as a creator uh, and the fact that we are created beings. So Maybe he was also pointing to the fact that, you know, they were creating all these idols, but there is a God uh, who has been created, who cannot be confined uh, to man's creation. Okay, So he, he was trying to get across that point. And uh, he also brings it later on. We see that you know, he will say, as some of your poets have said. So again, in a contextualized uh, manner, he says... Uh, some of your poets have said in verse 28, he end of that, he says, for we are also his offspring. Uh, and so he points out that God is a creator. And here we are, you know, we are his children. Um, and, you know, we must we must not forget that he's a great God and there's going to be judgment and, you know, righteousness is important and all of this. Uh, and uh, uh, why he's talking about it, he comes to a place where he's talking about the resurrection, okay, the resurrection um, of Jesus Christ. So he, he introduces the Lord Jesus and he begins to talk about the resurrection. So verse 31, he says, because he has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man. So that's how he's introducing Jesus, by the man 
who he has ordained, who is Jesus Christ. He has given assurance of this to all by raising him from the dead. Okay, so there is that reference to resurrection uh, in what Paul is stating about the Lord Jesus. And at that point, some of the listeners were not interested anymore because uh, they found resurrection, um, you know, a, not very impressive. Okay, and maybe not very acceptable. So uh, they start mocking Paul, and uh, they just kind of dismiss his talk. And they say, "Okay, we will hear you again on this matter uh, at another time." So Paul went from there, but at least he got an opportunity to share uh, Christ with these intellectual people. And what is the effect of that? You know, we learn that you know God is always faithful. There will be naysayers. There will be people who will uh, not listen to the gospel. But there were people whose hearts were open, and they believed what Paul was sharing with them. So verse 34 gives us a few names. Uh, it says, however, some men joined him and believed. Among them, Dionysius, the Areopagite, a woman named Damaris, and others with them. So you see, an intellectual person, Dionysius, an Areopagite, so he is from this whole culture and this whole uh, region of uh, you know reasoning new philosophies he puts his faith in jesus there's a lady called damaris okay, uh, who also believes in jesus and others with them whenever the bible says you know others with them there uh, could be so many other names which we uh, don't know but there were other believers here in athens Okay, so let's now move on. We we'll move on to Acts chapter eighteen. But before that, any thoughts, any comments, uh, you know, about what we are doing so far? So now we will see Paul go to uh, Corinth, and uh, a lot of uh, good ministry will happen there. So any thoughts? Yes, Kennedy. Thank you. What I just wanted to inquire: What influenced the culture of this people in this area? Your normal people, the people. What was the influence? What influence? What was causing the influence? To normal? Okay, uh, Kennedy. Sorry, I cannot hear you clearly. It, it's not what clear. I'm saying, eh? uh, yeah. What influenced the culture of these people? This people, of Berea. Mm. What made the normal who are listening? What was the reason behind their nobility? Okay. Uh, frankly, I haven't studied too much about the the people of Beria, so I don't know. <laughs> if there's anyone else you know a little bit more about Beria, could you share with us? I, we know their attitude, but I don't know why they had this attitude. Oh, sorry, what is your question? I couldn't hear it properly. Okay, so uh, I I think what Kennedy, yeah, go ahead, Kennedy, you can state it. What, what made, what was the influence that made them be normal people barrier? Because the people who are understanding, people could be, people, what was the reason, what was the culture behind that? So Kennedy is asking, why were the people of Varia the way they were? Fair-minded, searching the scriptures. So why did they have this good attitude? Anyone? These are all Jews, I believe, because they were searching the scriptures, no? Probably he was speaking to Jewish community there. But why they were doing it, we, we have no idea. Probably they are interested. First, also, I would like to know where this uh, Beria and uh, uh, Philippi are at present, in which country? 
exactly. Yes. Uh, thank you, Brother Manohar. Uh, I think he gave us a good answer there, right? Where uh, uh, he said uh, they were interested. First of all, they were Jews, so they had they had this habit of studying the scriptures. Uh, and uh, the habit is one thing. The second thing that we notice is that uh, they were interested. So whenever there is an interest. Uh, we can expect, you know, people to actually search the scripture. So that is probably the answer. Now, what what was what uh, external factors were there? Were there? I have no idea. But I think that's quite a satisfactory answer there. Uh, now, coming to the question where uh, Brother Manohar asked, you know, the current places. So. Um, the Asian region, uh, Brother Manohar, that we saw, right? Like where you have Ephesus and all those places. Uh, that Turkey. was, yeah, that was known as Asia Minor, uh, uh, you know, some years ago. But presently, it is Turkey. Okay. Presently, it is Turkey. Uh, and uh, the other places through which uh, he, he went through, Thessalonica, uh, Philippi, and all those places. That is Greece. So present day Greece is what we are talking about. Philippi, Thessalonica, Beria, uh, Athens, um, you know, Corinth. So, so it's uh, all present day Greece. Entire so, region comes under uh, uh, Greece now. Yeah, Greece. So uh, uh, you see how uh, when Paul actually wanted to go to Asia, he had the desire to minister in the same continent but god gave him a dream to go to macedonia which is actually another continent paul would not have understood all that right so we know like today for us uh what happened was the dream or, or dream of vision it took paul from the asian continent to the european continent okay so that is how uh, this this ministry actually began to happen. Uh, yeah, so I, I hope that helps, uh, Brother Manohar. Yes, first. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes, Christopher, you wanted to say something. Uh, yes, no, I just wanted to add something. I'm not sure if I, if I understood it clearly. Okay. But um, in Acts uh, 17, uh, I mean, my 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 view on the people in in, in Beria was that they were um, they were they they were easily swayed, or they were open open to you know to uh, to what uh, you know uh, other people were saying, because in verse thirteen they they say that it mentions that but when the Jews from Thessalonica learned that the word of God was being was preached by Paul at Berea, they came there also and stirred up the crowds, so that in itself that means that. Yeah, I'm not sure if that was, um, you know, something that kind of made the crowds sort of change their, their, uh, you know, uh, readiness to uh, to hear uh, what Paul was saying, and uh, uh, there was a negative aspect to, you know, the 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 way the Jews from Thessalonica stirred up the crowds, because the next verse immediately says that then immediately the brethren sent Paul away, so. Um, you know, I mean, my my view on this is that they were they were they, they were they were fair-minded, but they were also easily swayed. Yeah, uh, I, I think that that does make sense, uh, Christopher. So readiness and openness, it can it can have, uh, you know, the, they were open to everything. So uh, which would have been helpful, but at the same time, which could have been dangerous. But thank God, I see another aspect there where readiness is talked about with daily searching the scripture. So hopefully, uh, you know, these people were not, they, they knew how to filter out the wrong uh, doctrines. Sure. So, all right, let's uh, uh, stop here. We could take a break, come back in 10 minutes, and then pick up from Acts chapter 18. Thank you.